Hi, Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Welcome to semester 2 and we are currently on chapter 1 of the semester 2 topic which is fraction kinetic. So, in the first chapter, we're going to learn a 3 subtopic altogether which is 1.1 reaction rate, 1.2 collision theory and transition state theory, 1.3 factors affecting the reaction rate. Now, let us focus on 1.1 part 1 first which is reaction rate. So in this video, we're going to look into what is meant by the definition of the reaction rate. We also have to explain the graph of the concentration against time in relation to the reaction rate that we have learned in part A. We also have to write the differential rate equation based on this equation and it will be looking something like this. Alright, and the last part is we're going to determine the reaction rate based on the differential equation that we have constructed. So, without any further ado, let us start. So, reaction rate is basically the change in the concentration of a reactant or a product over a period of time. Let's say if you have a equation of reactant A going to B, we can say that the rate of the change of the reactant A is equal to the negative dA over dt, where dA is the change in the concentration of A, and dt uh, basically means that over a period of time. Meanwhile, the rate of change in B or the rate of reaction is equal to, to the dB over dt, where dB is equal to the change in concentration of B. As what you can see here, the rate of change in A is going to have a negative sign. Meanwhile, the rate of change in B is going to have a positive sign. This is because Reaction A will be decreases with time because it is acting as a reactant. Meanwhile, B is going to be increasing over time because it's acting as a product. And for the unit for the rate of reaction, going to be molar per second or mole per liter per second, either one. And this is also the representation that I have mentioned just now. As what you can see here, A is represented by the black color particle here. So at time zero, the concentration of the reactant is very, very high. But as time goes by, the black particle is now decreasing. Meanwhile, uh, for the red particle, which is represented by B here, at first there is none but it will start, in, start to increase over time. And this is why the rate of the reaction of A is going to have a negative sign here because it is decreasing over time. Meanwhile, for B, it's going to have a positive value here because it is increasing over time. Alright? And also remember that, that the reaction rate is inversely proportional to time. What it means by that, this was when the rate of, when the time decreases, the rate of the reaction increases. So, um, the shorter the time taken for the reaction to progress, the higher is the rate of the reaction. So, for example, if the time taken for um, this reaction to happen is 10 seconds, so it's, we got the rate going to be 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. Okay? But then, if the time is being shortened, for example, 1 over 5 seconds is going to be 0 0.2 seconds. So you can see that when the time is decreasing, the rate of the reaction will start to increase. Now, we're going to learn what is meant by the differential rate equation. Where the differential rate equation basically means is the relationship between the rate of the disappearance of the reactant and the rate of the appearance or formation of the product. So, let's say if we were to given this example where AA plus PB going to CC plus DD. If we were to write the differential rate equation, we're going to put it as rate equal to negative DA because it is a reactant DA over DT. And the stoichiometry here, we have to put at the front where we can put it as 1 over A minus. Okay. 
and same goes to here where you're going to have negative because it's a reactant 1 over B because B here representing the stoichiometry D B over DT okay and also equal to plus 1 over C DC over DT and also equal to plus 1 over D DD over DT okay so basically the rate of the disappearance of A is equal to the rate of the disappearance of B and equal to the rate of the appearance of formation of C and the rate of formation of D. So if I were to put it nicely, it's going to be looking something like this, where A, B, C, and D here representing a stoichiometric coefficient. So you just have to divide it. All right, and don't forget the negative sign which representing a reactant and positive sign here representing a product. So for the formation of NH3, where nitrogen gas reacting with three moles of hydrogen gas producing an ammonia. So we have to write the differential rate equation. Okay, so as you will expect, the rate gonna be negative dN2 over dt because here representing one, right? So it's gonna be one over one, but we don't have to write the one here. Okay, and for this one, you can expect it to be negative 1 over 3 dH2 over dt. And for the plus 1, which is the product, it's going to be equal to positive 1 over 2 dNH3 over dt. Positive because it is a product. Alright? And it is compulsory to start your differential rate equation with this word. We have to start it with rate equal to, then only you write your differential rate equation. Alright? Where this equation means that the rate of the disappearance of N2 is equal to the uh, 1 over 3 of the rate of the dis disappearance of H2, because disappearance means this negative, right? It started to decrease. And one, or, and 1 over 2 of the rate of formation of NH3, okay, or appearance started to increase. Now let's do a second example. So for this example, we have to consider the reaction of 2HI decomposes into hydrogen gas and iodine gas. So we have to determine the rate of the disappearance of HI when the rate of the formation of I2 is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 6 molar per second. So, first step here, we have to, use, to do the differential rate equation. So, please write your differential rate equation here. So, pause the video and try yourself. Okay, once you've done that, you can check your answer here. Uh, it's equal to the negative 1 over 2 dHi over dt is equal to dH2 over dt equal to di2 over dt. So, uh, what important to we can uh, select what's important to us. For example, we need to find the rate of the disappearance of HI. So we need this one. And we have the information for the rate of formation of I2, which is given here. So this one. So we can equate this one equal to this one. Right? And given here is, um, and we can also bring the two to the right hand side. Okay, because we need to find the rate of the disappearance of DHI. Okay, and also given here is DI2 over DT, which is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So we can plug in the value here. So once we do that and do the maths, you will get 3.6 times 10 to the power of negative 6 molar per second. Alright, nice one. For example, number three, we have to consider the reaction between magnesium solid and hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So the equation is given as written here. 
So first, we have to write the differential rate equation for the above reaction. So, uh, pause the video and try to do the differential rate equation once again. Okay? Now, once you do that, you will get the differential rate equation to be something like this. Okay? As what you can see here, the DHL, uh, the rate of the disappearance of um, hydrochloric acid is included. Same goes to the magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. This is because um, the states of matter for this species is in gas aqueous and aqueous here. But for the differential rate equation, the solid state will not be included in the differential rate equation because it exists in solid. Same goes to the one in liquid. We also don't have to include it. All right. So if you have included that here, so please remove that. Now, for question B, uh, the question says that when hydrogen, the concentration of hydrogen gas is increasing at 0.32 mole per dm cube per second, what is the rate of decrease of the hydrochloric acid? So we can just relating this one with this one. Okay, and as we move this two to the right hand side, so we're going to have something like this. So, given here is dH2 over dt, which is 0.32 mole per dm cube per second, so we can substitute this value inside here. So, once we do that, we will get 0.64 mole per dm cube per second. Alright, I think this is all for the, to this video. See you again in the next one. Bye.